Our scripture passage today is from the 23rd Psalm. And uh, before we read this, let us bow our heads in prayer. Good and heavenly Father, Lord, you've given us all good gifts and you have given us your word, your scripture, your promise to illuminate our path, Lord, to light our ways upon life and to instruct us in the ways that we should live. But Father, as we come upon this word, we know we can understand nothing you have revealed to us unless the same spirit that inspired it inspires us now. And so we ask, Lord, to send that spirit to our hearts and minds to teach us, to instruct us, to open us up to the secrets and the mysteries of your word and your wonder. Father, bless this holy reading of your holy word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Um, after we read this, there will be a brief moment of quiet meditation. This is Psalm 23. Listen now to the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, unless you haven't heard already, there is a new app out. I don't know, there's always a new app out. This one you may have heard of is called TikTok. Now, some of you, if you're over a certain age, you probably have never used it, never seen it. You've heard about it, but you've had nothing to do with it. But if you're under a certain age, it is probably your bread and butter. You probably spend a good portion of your days looking at this app and looking at all that's on this app, TikTok. Now, if you've not heard of it, and you don't know what it is, like I said, TikTok is an app. It's an app where you can make and share videos with your friends. And there are these, they're real short. They're all the way from 10 seconds up to about a minute or so. Always quick videos, and you can do lots of things with it. Um, a lot of people like to dance on it. They have little dance moves on there. Uh, sometimes they do some lip syncing. Um, sometimes they will uh, just give some opinions, uh, their thoughts for the day. They'll share conspiracy theories. I mean, anything you can think of, it's on TikTok, all the way from the religious to the profane. You can find it on TikTok. And, and normally when you make a video, you share it with your friends, and the people, only people that see it are your friends or your subscribers or the people that are, are friends with you on, on the app. But every once in a while, something special happens to your video. And it does what we call going viral. As in, it will just hit the waves. It'll become popular. It'll, it'll strike a chord for some reason. We don't know how or why, but it'll become immensely popular and just tons and tons of people will see it. And it, it's not always the best videos that go viral. Because I've seen some of these viral videos and I'm kind of like, huh? I mean, why is everybody watching this video? And there are some others that are a lot better that don't go viral. So it's not always the good ones that end up going viral. Uh, like there was one, for instance, where this, uh, this woman was throwing a yellow ball to her dog. And at one point she threw it to the dog and the dog bit down on it. It looked like he swallowed the ball. That's all that happened. Okay, over 1.4 million views on TikTok. 1.4 million. Another one was a guy who had... Um, his truck had broken down, and he had to go to work, so he rode his skateboard to work. And so he was filming himself riding his skateboard to work, and Stevie Nicks is playing on the background, and he's drinking an energy drink. Like, that's it. 
That's all that happened. 72 million views on that video of a guy riding a skateboard. Now, what's interesting is both of these people that had did those videos, over a million and 17, 72 million views, have tried to make another viral video. And they've tried real hard to, to duplicate that success. And both have been unsuccessful. And it's left everyone wondering what makes a video go viral and what makes it be just another video. Of the millions that are made every day, what is it that makes just a few break through and achieve a very brief uh, but very widespread notoriety? Well, in the book of Psalms, we have 150 psalms written. But of all those psalms, there is one viral that is the king of them all. Psalm 23. If they were all TikTok videos, this would be the one that hit more views and more likes than any other psalm ever written. Psalm 23 is the king of the psalms. This is the one that is loved and adored by millions of people for thousands, literally thousands of years. Now, why this one? Why this psalm? Why is it this one that became so popular? And there are a lot of others in this, in this book that are, I would say, just as good, maybe even better than Psalm 23. It's all a matter of opinion. But you've got Psalm 139, which is my personal favorite. You, psalm 19, Psalm 91, a lot of really good psalms. But why is it this one that strikes the heart and the soul's of millions of not even believers, not just believers, but non-believers also, can read these words and be moved by them. So this psalm was written by King David. This is one of the many that that we do have a name for and an authorship, and King David wrote this psalm, and it it falls in the genre of a faith psalm. It's a faith psalm, and and, and what those are, are they're psalms to encourage us and strengthen us in our faith. It's that psalm where it's one of those where we read them and we get the message of, listen, you can do this. Just hang on. Just believe whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, it's going to be all right. You've got the strength to do this. The Lord has your back. Just believe. Just believe and you will triumph. And if that's the goal of the psalm, the faith psalm, then 23 has succeeded truly like no other. These few brief words, only six verses, have inspired and comforted, encouraged millions of people for thousands of years. And I would go so far as to say this is the most influential piece of poetry that any human being has ever written. Now, for those that uh, we got an English teacher out here, maybe might argue a little differently. Maybe there's, I like to know if there is a more influential one. Love to know, but I think this has got to be, if not the most influential, the most influential piece of poetry or literature that's ever been written. And it's very powerful. If you ever needed to speak this this psalm out in a time of trouble, you notice how powerful these words are. And and it's not a mistake that we usually hear it read at a funeral. Because some of our our darkest hours, we turn to this psalm that gives us the most comfort. And, And I think it's unfortunate that it's become to be known as the funeral psalm. Because there's so many other situations in our life where we can read these words and we get the strength and the comfort that God provides to us through them. Um, My grandmother, my great-grandmother, she lived 102 years old. She was a very devout woman, uh, but she was scared of storms, um, terrified of storms. And when we were preparing her funeral, we looked at her, her Bible, and in the margin, right next to the 23rd Psalm, she'd written in it, read during a storm. And, and I, I've had some experience with Psalm 23 there. There's been times where I've had to invoke its power in my life. Uh, one in particular is I had just gotten a job working with a contractor. I was right out of college, so I was the low man on the totem pole. And you know what they say, low man on the totem pole, high man on the ladder. And I hate ladders. I hate high spaces. And he had this ladder, this big old ladder, and it is extended all the way. I swear it was like 10-story 10, 10 house or something. Probably not quite that big, but it felt like it. And it was all the way to the top. And he said, give me a brush and paint can. 
You need to paint that little fascia board on the very, very top of the house. And if y'all know the extension ladders, if you ever climbed on one, the more it extends, the more it wobbles like this when you walk. And this one had been all the way up. And they even like had banged a crowbar in there to keep it in place at the bottom. And I'm climbing it. It's, it's wobbling like that. The wind's blowing. I know it's like a thousand feet down. But I asked the guy, I said, hey, here's my can of paint. Here's a brush. How am I supposed to hold on? I don't have another hand. So I had to wrap my arm around the ladder like this at the top. And I was just painting like that. It was, it was awful. I'm glad it was up high. No way I could see the job I did. But the whole time, the whole time I was up there, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's the only way I got it done. I promise you, the only way I got it done was using this psalm in my spiritual arsenal. And I, truly, I feel sorry for someone who doesn't have this. I feel sorry for someone who does not have this in their arsenal of weapons that when they face difficulty, trial, despair, and darkness, they can answer back with, the Lord is my shepherd. I think that's why this is so, such a popular song. Why it has gone viral is it describes to us best the hope and assurance that belongs to us when the Lord is your shepherd. And it starts out very simply. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And, and it's, a, it's a psalm that's full of beautiful imagery. And the first image we get is it's a very simple one, is, is the shepherd. And, and we know what a shepherd does. A shepherd, he watches over the sheep. And, and there is the image of our shepherd, our Lord, who is the shepherd watching, standing over us. And there is a sense that you don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. Why? Because you see, see, see the shepherd standing right over us? That's the Lord. He's our shepherd. He's the one watching over us. He is the one caring for us. And, and then it says, you know, I shall not want. And for the longest time as a kid, I was so confused by that. Because it sounded like it was saying that I shall not want the Lord as my shepherd. And I thought it should say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall want. But the want doesn't refer back to the shepherd, it refers to us. It's a completely different phrase. I shall not want, as in I shall not need. I shall not feel one. Perhaps it should be read, the Lord is my shepherd, I will want or I will lack for nothing. Because the Lord is my shepherd. And he co continues on with these images. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And here the image comes again of the, of the green pastures and the still waters. But the pastures and waters are not, are not about provision. It's not about feeding us and giving us water. These are images he gives us of rest. You notice he says, he says he makes me lie down in green pastures. Not makes me eat in green pastures. He makes me lie down. As in because he's our shepherd, we can find a place of Sabbath and a place of rest. Because God is our shepherd, we can trust enough and be confident enough that he will lead us to these places of peace and rest that will restore our souls. That will give us every bit and ounce of strength that we need for the fight and for the path ahead. And he tells us that he leads us in paths of righteousness or, or right paths. And that's exactly what it sounds like. He leads us in the right way we're supposed to go. There's a right way and a wrong. There's good and there's evil. There's the path that leads to death and there's the path that leads to life. And our God leads us in the right path. Come on, little sheep. This is where you go. No, no, no. Not there. Not there. Come on. Come on. And when the Lord's our shepherd, when we let him lead us, he will lead us in the right paths. But I always found interesting is that he says he leads us in the right paths for his name's sake. It's not for our sake, not for our name's sake. It is for his name's sake that he leads us in right paths. And that tells us that when we, when we do right, when we are good sheep of the Lord, when we obey his word, when we follow his instruction and command, we bring glory to his name. It's for his name's sake that we do all these things. When we are good people, 
when we endure with faith, when we go through our trials and we suffer without complaint, we are bringing glory to the name of God. And we're reflecting well back on Him. This is something I didn't really understand much until I had kids. Growing up, my mom would always tell me, mom and dad both would stress them to me, you got to be careful how you act in public because it reflects back on us. And I always thought to myself, like, how in the world is that going to reflect back on you? How, do, how come the way I act reflect back on my family? Then I had kids. <laughs> and I understood how the behavior with a child reflect back on the family. And then when my kids go do good, I get the good compliment. It gives glory to our family. Oh, your kids are good. They're so well behaved. I'm glad for you, but, you know. But it reflects well back on us. And the same, the, 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 um, the converse is also true. If they were to behave poorly, that reflects shame back on our family. And as children of God, as disciples of God, as followers of God and believers in Jesus Christ, how we act can either reflect glory or shame back unto the name of God. But He, as our shepherd, leads us in the right paths. And when we follow in those paths, we reflect glory back to His name. And then comes probably the most powerful image that we get from this psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, if you want to get real technical with the Hebrew, it actually says, even though I walk through the darkest valley. But that doesn't have the, I don't know, doesn't have the same punch that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I know that's just old King James, but to me, it's the best way to describe this. It's walking through this dark valley, the valley of the shadow of death. It's any time that we are facing danger and uncertainty. And we will all face danger and uncertainty. We'll all go through periods in our life where we're facing fear or despair. Times in our life where we're going through danger or even depression or grief. Or maybe we're facing death and mortality and having to stare it right in the face. It's the dark valley. That's the valley of the shadow of death. And this psalm gives the best answer you possibly can for going through the valley of the shadow of death. It says, I will fear no evil. And the reason why we fear no evil, even though we're walking through, we're in the shadow of the shadow of evil and death. We can fear no evil because he says, Thou art with me. That shepherd we've been talking about, the shepherd that, that is the Lord, that is ours, he's with us in that dark valley. We always think we're walking through it alone, but we're not. He says, The Lord is with me. He says, Thou art with me. Walk, and not only walking through the Lord, you're walking with the flock. You're walking with, with all your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we can fear no evil walking through that valley because the Lord is with us. And then we look up and we see what he's holding in his hand. He says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Have y'all seen the shepherd's crook got a hook on the end? That's for reaching out and, and pulling the sheep, making sure they're going on the paths of righteousness, the paths, the right paths. doesn't matter how dark. We're afraid that we're going to stumble and fall or, or get lost. But that staff, it comforts me because he's always there just pulling me, pulling me back in with me the whole, every step of the way. And the great thing about that staff is it's got the hook on the end to guide us, but can also be turned around to give our enemies a good knock on the head. That's how it comforts me. I'm going through this dark valley, this, this worst, this awful period in time in my life, but I'm not going to fear any evil because the shepherd's walking with me. And his guidance and his protection are with me every single step of the way. And not only that, in the midst of this, he promises abundance. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So here, here's another great image that he has. He says, we're in the presence of our enemies. We're still in that valley of the shadow of death. But even in the midst of that, he says, you prepare a table in the presence of mine enemies. So here is God preparing this table for us in order to sit down and to eat and to enjoy in abundance. And our enemy's sitting right there. And he can do nothing. He's just sitting there scowling. Look at them enjoying that abundance of God. And I can't touch it. 
I can't do anything about it. The enemy wants to take it away. He wants to destroy it, but he can't because it's in the presence of God. And his abundance is so great and so secure that the enemy can only sit there and watch and do nothing. And even as that enemy's watching, he says, he, he anoints my head with oil. And that's a sign of favor when you're anointing somebody or christening somebody. That's God saying, this here, this child I'm anointing, it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. And you, enemy, you can do nothing about it. And his abundance is so great, it's so great it says, my cup runneth over or my cup overflows. That's the abundance of God. That's how he gives. He doesn't give filling your cup up halfway. He didn't even fill it up all the way and we're going to stop here at the top. No, no, God's abundance, he says, my cup runs over. My cup overflows as in it's coming out the top and it's spilling on the ground. It's, it's wasteful excess. But that's sometimes the wasteful nature of God. He lavishes us so much that he will give us so much we don't even we can't even do every, anything with it. We got like I've got so much blessing, so much abundance. I, I don't have room for it. It's overflowing and it's spilling out. And I know a lot of you are thinking, "Gosh, when is that coming from me?" I'd like to have that where where it's overflowing. But I think you already have. See, when we think about that, we're thinking of always money. But you're never going to have so much money that it's overflowing because you just keep putting it in bank accounts, right? Keep investing it somewhere else. But think about what else you have in life. I bet your cup runs over already. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gone to your closet and said, I've got too many clothes. I don't even know what I have. Or my closet's not big enough to fit all the clothes that I have. Or I got my chest of drawers is, is too small to fit all the clothes I have. I need to give some of this away. That's your cup running over. You've been blessed so much that you can't fit the abundance God has given you. Or sometimes you might have said, we need a bigger house. We've got too much stuff. We've got too much stuff. It doesn't even fit in our house. We had to do that uh, a few years ago, but it was because we had too many kids. <laughs> but God will bless you in different ways. Our cup was running over. Believe me, it was a tiny little house. That cup was running over. God was blessing us with children that we had to go find another, a bigger cup. Because that one was too small. Have any of you ever had to throw out food? Because we didn't, we had so much food, we couldn't even eat it before it went bad. That's your cup running over. Or how many of you have done this? You order something, but you can order one more thing and you get free shipping. So you order something you don't even want or need necessarily, but you order it just so you get the free shipping. That is your cup running over. And that is the abundance that God has blessed you with as your shepherd. Now, this psalm ends with a promise. In verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's actually two promises. One is a present, one is a future promise. First one, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's a present promise. Think of this image again. Think of like maybe having two dogs, one named goodness, one mercy. And wherever you go, those dogs go with you. Wherever you go, they take a blessing with you, wherever you are. You go through the darkest valley, I don't have to be afraid because goodness and mercy are following me. I step over here, here come goodness and mercy. I go over here, goodness and mercy right here, right behind me. And whatever I experience, whatever I go through, I know goodness and mercy are with me because they're following right behind. And you know what's coming next in your life. Goodness and mercy. Because that's what follows you wherever you go. And that's why we can always hope and we can always endure because we know what's coming next in life. Goodness and mercy. They follow us everywhere. And it finally ends with, with a future promise. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we can take this literally to mean that we're going to be with God forever. And that's certainly what he means in this. That we will live in the house of the Lord forever as we will be with God in eternity. 
But in the ancient world, when they talked about house, it wasn't just like we talk about house, this brick building with windows and doors and a roof where we live. Being in someone's house meant you were part of their family. Like I'm in the house of Seely. Or you might be in the, the house of Moore or the house of McCarty. So whatever family you're a part of. And this promises is us that I will be in the house of the Lord forever. I will be in God's family forever. I will belong to God forever. The promise of eternal life where I will dwell with Him and the promise that I will always belong to God and nothing can change it. And I think it's that word that truly gives this psalm its power. Forever. Forever. In a world of trends, a world of popularity, a world where the, the powerful and the great, when the popular will rise and fall. And it's happened for all history. What's different today is now we can be uh, uh, famous for our 22nd spot of internet fame. But in this world of, of shifting loyalties and of shifting fame, he gives us something here that's beyond style, that's beyond fame, that's beyond popularity, that's beyond any trend this world may set. So our God says, forever. That's the promise of God. The promise of God is forever. You will always belong to the family of God. You will always belong to the Lord. Nothing can change it. That is a promise that is never broken. When the Lord is your shepherd, nothing can change that you belong to Him. And I mean nothing. Not loss, not fear, not pain, not grief, not sickness, not even the valley of the shadow of death can change that you belong to God. Enemies cannot change it. Their hatred cannot change it. Heartache cannot change it. Even death itself cannot change. That You will always belong to God. Friends, we live in a world that what is here today is gone tomorrow. But God's promise is forever. I want you to remember that next time you're in a storm or next time you're on a high ladder or next time you're facing the danger and uncertainty of life. Pull this weapon out of your spiritual arsenal. The Lord is my shepherd. And remember His promise to watch over us. His promise to keep us. His promise that we will belong to Him. It's a promise that will last longer than time itself. To God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.